हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे शुल प्रभुपात की जय अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृंद की जय निताय गौर प्रेमानंदे हरे हरि बोल थैंक यू वंस अगेन डियर डिबोटीज फॉर काइंडली बीइंग प्रेजेंट हियर आई एम वेरी थैंकफुल टू ईच एंड एवरी वन ऑफ यू फॉर काइंडली गिविंग द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट रिसोर्स ऑफ योर लाइफ व्हिच इज योर टाइम and there is no resource more important than time not even money is more important than the time that we have and you are kindly giving your time to me for which i am very very grateful to each and every one of you my sincere thanks to everybody for kindly being present here today my thanks also to our wonderful host rameshwar mahaprabhu prabhu for kindly originally suggesting the idea that we should have a series on उपदेशामृतम और सम सिमिलर लिटरेचर वेन आई वॉज विजिटिंग द लगूना बीच टेम्पल वी वर ड्राइविंग दैट इज वेन ही पुट द आइडिया एंड टूडे इट हैज फ्रक्टिफाइड इन द फॉर्म ऑफ दिस सीरीज ऑफ टॉक्स ऑन श्री उपदेशामृतम सो द क्रेडिट गोज टू हिम फॉर कंसेप्चुअलाइजिंग दिस सीरीज ऑन श्री उपदेशामृतम वी आर कंटिन्यूइंग आवर series and today we are in the third verse of shri upadeshamritam and we are studying it in great detail because we have lots of time for this thing for studying we have unlimited time so dear devotees let's continue our study of shri upadeshamritam we try to offer something fresh to shri rupa goswami from time to time so a fresh pranam mantra for shri rupa goswami ज्ञाने सरस्वती रूपम व्यास रूपम च शिक्षण नाट्य भरत रूपम तम श्री रूपम प्रणमा ज्ञाने सरस्वती रूपम एंड टू हिम हु इज सरस्वती रूप लाइक अ सरस्वती देवी व्हेन इट कम्स टू नॉलेज व्यास रूपम च शिक्षण एंड इन द फील्ड ऑफ टीचिंग ही इज लाइक अ सेकंड व्यास देव नाट्य भरत रूपम एंड इन द फील्ड ऑफ dramaturgy writing dramas he is like a second bharat muni and to that shri rupa i pay my humble obeisances <clears throat> dear devotees we have completed the second verse of shri upadeshamritam and we are now moving into the third verse and in this third verse six qualities that enhance bhakti and six activities that enhance bhakti will be discussed so this is the third instruction that shri rupa goswami is giving to all of us this third verse is now in front of us i'll try to recite it and after reciting it we'll get into the details of the meter and then we'll see the word for word and the meaning so the third verse is as follows उत्साह निश्चया धैर्यात्म प्रवर्तना संगत्यागा सतो वृत्ति षडिर्भक्ति प्रसिद्ध सो इफ वी सी दिस थर्ड वर्ष फ्रॉम अ मेट्रिकल पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू सो इट हैज एट सिलेबल्स पर लाइन एज वॉज द केस विथ द प्रीवियस वर्ष सो दिस इज द स्टैंडर्ड मीटर in sanskrit poetics so in sanskrit prosody this is the meter named anushtuk this is the meter of most of the verses in the bhagavad gita as well as shrimad bhagavatam so this is the most common meter and it is said that this meter was first revealed to adi kavi the original poet on planet earth shri valmiki it was shri valmiki who on planet earth got this meter from the adi kavi brahma so there is the adi kavi lord brahma of the entire universe and there is adi kavi on planet earth shri valmiki <clears throat> so this meter was revealed to shri valmiki by shri brahma and uh, this meter is named anushtuk it has now become the most common meter in composing verses now we will see what is the meaning of each and every term 
so we go top to bottom and then left to right so i will speak the terms thameshwar prabhu you please speak the meanings sounds good bhakti hi bhakti prasidhyati is perfected shadvihi by these six namely utsahat <coughs> enthusiasm nischayat determination tat tat karma pravartanat uh, i think you skipped dharya oh okay yeah dharya yeah dharya is by patience yeah i'm saying I'll, i'll fix it for the next time yes tat tat karma pravartanat um Persever- perseverance and execution of acts favorable to bhakti oh, yes i'm sorry it was here somehow because of the dark shade i couldn't notice yeah so dhairyat is perseverance and tat tat karma pravartanat is execution of acts favorable to bhakti sangatyagat giving up unfavorable association and vrittah following the conduct satah of the sadhus right so prabhu in the same sequence just read the english <coughs> one moment please bhakti is perfected by these six namely enthusiasm determination perseverance execution of acts favorable to bhakti giving up unfavorable association and following the conduct of the sadhus that's it we have a literal translation in front of us so this is a plain vanilla translation of the verse and you know this method of translation is called anvay anvay means you get the translation simply by rearranging the terms of the verse so this is called as anvay so this anvay reveals to us the plain vanilla translation of the verse and here i have given it in the form of a sentence the same which we read i have put it here in the form of a sentence bhakti is perfected by these six namely first enthusiasm second determination third perseverance fourth execution of acts favorable to bhakti fifth giving up unfavorable association and sixth following the conduct of the sadhus today we are going to discuss the first that is utsah so or enthusiasm so this term is explained by the commentator shri radha raman goswami in his commentary to shri upadeshamritam shri radha raman goswami says tat tat anga anushthane utsukat what it means is that the term utsahat means by exhibiting utsuka enthusiasm in the execution of the various limbs of bhakti so what he is saying here is utsah in general means enthusiasm but enthusiasm for what specifically so enthusiasm for executing the respective limbs of bhakti so utsahat is for tat tat karma for those those limbs of bhakti so utsah means having determination in executing those respective limbs of bhakti shrila bhakti vinod thakur explains in a more detailed fashion shrila bhakti vinod thakur says jeevan yatra nirvah u bhaktir anushilan ei dui tai bhaktir avashyak he says two things are necessary for a devotee please understand what are these two things first jeevan yatra nirvah to properly execute nirvah jeevan yatra the journey of one's life so to execute the journey of one's life in a saintly manner first and foremost and secondly bhaktir anushilan to execute devotional service so dear devotees remember two things are important first is to live like a good sadhu second is to execute the limbs of bhakti so both things are important to live your life like a sadhu to execute devotional service he is putting these two points because he wants to say something about the verse what does he want to say let's see ahead he says shloke ra pratham ardhe bhakti anushilane ra anukula kriya vyavastha 
so he says in the first two lines of the verse they specify four acts that are favorable to bhakti in the first two lines utsahat nishchayat dhairyat and tat tat karma pravartanat these are four things and these four things are favorable to bhakti hmm? so first two lines are specifying four things now these four things are regarding what what is favorable to bhakti and what should be done okay then he says sheshardhe bhakta jeevanera vyavastha now two lines remain now those two lines have two activities sangatyagat giving up bad association and satovritte following the conduct of the sadhus these two lines specify two acts in the ideal life of a devotee so coming back let's go back to the previous slide two things are needed to execute the limbs of bhakti and to live the life of a sadhu all right so to execute the limbs of a bhakti the first two lines are there utsahat nischayat dhairyat tat tat karma pravartanat and to live the life of a sadhu remaining two are there sangatyagat and satovritte these two are for living an ideal life of a devotee this is what shri bhakti vinod thakur says so in these six he divides them into two different parts first four and the remaining two now he says utsah nischaya dhairya bhakti poshak karyanushthan sangatyagu sadachar va sadvritti haite bhakti siddha so by following these six acts utsah nischaya etc once bhakti is perfected now he comes to the main point what is utsah so he says utsah bhaktir ang anushthane autsukya exactly the same interpretation as shri radharaman goswami so utsah means to have enthusiasm for executing the limbs of bhakti and then he says what happens to a person who doesn't have utsah audasinye on becoming unenthusiastic bhakti lop hai once bhakti is lost आदरेर सहित अनुशीलनी उत्साह सो टू एक्सिक्यूट भक्ति विथ आदर विथ ग्रेट अटेंशन एंड केयर इज वॉट उत्साह इज ऑल अबाउट टू एक्सिक्यूट ऑल द लिम्स ऑफ भक्ति नॉट सिंपली मैकेनिकली बट आदर सहित आदर सहित मीन्स विथ ग्रेट अटेंशन एंड केयर इज वॉट उत्साह इज ऑल अबाउट सो डियर डिबोट इज मेनी टाइम्स गेस्ट कम टू अवर होम समाइम्स सम गेस्ट आर अन इन्वाइटेड Tameshwar Prabhu, if a guest comes uninvited uninvited to your home, and he comes many times, how would you treat such a guest? Well, <laughs> I would try to be polite, but maybe at some point I would um, yes bring up that they're perhaps freeloading. Right. I, I mean, I wouldn't be so blunt about it, but yeah. Right. so but if that guest is if some other guest comes and that guest is coming after many years and that guest is your spiritual master how will you receive him oh uh, we'll be really excited and clean the whole house and greet him very warmly and have garlands we have, we actually have had vaishesh kumaraj here in our home it was right. really wonderful right so that is called adar adar is attention and care so shri rupa goes shri bhakti vinod thakur says execution of limbs of bhakti not simply with a mechanical frame of mind that i have to do this but with other the same care and respect and attention that we afford to a special personality in our lives so with that same care and attention we have to execute now shri la bhakti siddhant saraswati thakur he also says he says gyan karma va anya vilash tatparye ye sakal sadhan vidhan u ruchi prad vishay katha ache tahate udasin haiya sadhan bhaktir ang vishesh utsah so in a single line he defines what utsah is he says to become indifferent udasin haiya to all means of attaining gyan impersonal knowledge karma fruitive vedic activities and any other desire any abhilash besides bhakti and to give up talks that kindle interest in such topics and to instead show enthusiasm in executing limbs of bhakti is known as utsah so utsah is twofold 
the negative part and the positive part. Negative part is avoiding utsaha for jnana, utsaha for karma, utsaha for anya abhilash, to give up talks that kindle such interest and to instead show utsaha in executing the limbs of bhakti. Short and sweet, all three commentators are falling in a straight line and saying that utsaha is enthusiasm for executing limbs of bhakti. We will keep that in our mind. To keep many complicated commentaries in our mind may not be possible. But one common line of thought is running between all commentators. That common line of thought is that to show enthusiasm for executing the various limbs of bhakti is known as utsaha. Now this enthusiasm should be natural. It should be organic. It should not be forced. In a previous session, during the question and answers, I have given one example that a mango, which is not yet ripe, may be attached to the tree. Now, we can, it is very hard. We can try to soften it in two ways. First is pluck it out of the tree and beat it with a stick. And second is allow it some time and its natural process of growth. So the better way is to allow its allow it to have its natural process of growth so that it becomes naturally ripened. So we have to develop utsaha, which is natural, organic, not artificial and fake. Not that utsaha which manifests only on the day, you know, that a special guest is coming to the temple. Only on that day we have utsaha. And remaining days we become unenthusiastic about bhakti. So not that type of show bottle utsaha, but genuine utsaha we have to manifest in our lives. Srila Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur says that the devotee, you know, the entire world is showing utsaha about other things, but the devotee doesn't show utsaha in them. And the entire world is not showing utsaha towards bhakti, but the devotee shows utsaha in that. And he quotes the verse of Bhagavad Gita. Ya nisha sarva bhutanam tasyang jagarti samyami. What is night? Night here means darkness of ignorance regarding bhakti. For other living entities is the time when the sober one, dhiraha, samyami, remains awake and executes bhakti. So with this he you know, describes utsaha in his commentary on Sri Upadeshamrita. Now, moving ahead, we have to understand that when we begin our bhakti, we are naturally gifted with utsaha. Utsaha is the first dish that Bhagwan serves to us when we begin our process of bhakti. All of us remember when we were new devotees, how was our level of enthusiasm in those initial days? Sometimes some devotees say, I wish I could rejoin ISKCON. Which means, I wish I could go back to those days when I became enthusiastic simply by hearing that prashadam is about to be served. When I became enthusiastic simply by hearing that there will be a Maha Sankirtan today. When I became enthusiastic simply by hearing that the Sunday program is coming up and they will be discussing why we are not the body but we are the soul. Today, we don't find such utsaha. Many of us don't find such utsaha in our lives. That utsaha was an initial dish served to us and only single serving. Thameshwar Prabhu, we asked for a second serving, but there was no second serving of utsaha in our spiritual lives. Therefore, we have to reminisce that utsaha which we had previously in our spiritual lives. Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur in the Madhurya Kadambini reminisces the initial utsaha of a devotee. Sri Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says in the Madhurya Kadambini Prathamam eva shastra madhetum arabhamanasya sarva loka shlokya mana pandityam upapannamiva svasmin manyamanasya patoriva utsaha swadhikaranasya prachurayatiti utsahamai Prathamameva Shastra Madhya Tumarabhamanase. The process of bhakti is full of utsaha in the beginning. 
He says, this is exactly like the utsaha of a student, but oh, who has just begun his studies of the scriptures. Such a student thinks that the entire glorious erudition of the world has manifested itself within me. Today, the world will know what a great scholar of Shastra started his study today. In a few years, people will come to know what a great Pandit I am. In this way, the student thinks in his initial days. When he sees his new notebooks, his new pen, paper, he becomes enthusiastic. He happily writes his name on the first page. And he says, this will be a remarkable notebook in my journey. People will remember that this was the notebook on which this great devotee used to write his notes. And people will copy my notes from my notebook and they will make it their notes. And this is the initial enthusiasm of a devotee. All of us who have gone to school on the first day that we have written the names on the notebooks, we remember all the good promises that we made to ourselves and to our parents. Yes, I will study nicely this year, dear father. I promise you, I'll bring the first grade. You know, this time, I'll be, I'll bring more than 75% or 80%, you know, or A grade or B grade, something like that. So I'll bring A plus this time, dear father. And initial promises which were made after a few days, we come to the ground reality that the initial utsah fades away. So, Dhameshwar Prabhu, can we do something to make sure that our utsah will stay intact? Yes, definitely. And I would say associate with devotees who are enthusiastic and realized in Krishna consciousness. All right. So, <clears throat> If our utsaha persists for a long time, we will quickly attain success in all our endeavors. In the Ramayan, Sri Valmiki Muni, he has penned down a verse where he says, Anirveda Shri Omulam, Anirveda Param Sukham, Anirveda Enthusiasm. Shriyo Mulam is the cause of attainment of all auspiciousness. Anirvedaha Param Sukham and enthusiasm leads to the greatest happiness. So if our Utsaha persists for a long time, we will certainly achieve success. At the same time, there is something which causes loss of Utsaha. And most of us have experienced that those initial days of enthusiasm have left us long time ago. Now we are struggling here. We don't know where to go. So it's important to understand what has caused this lack of initial utsaha. And Sri Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur very clearly says, Rakamya manani bhakti angani kadachi nirvahanti kadachi chanaveti. So he says, on beginning the execution of limbs of bhakti, the sadhak is sometimes able to carry out these limbs and sometimes not. So initial days he had enthusiasm. Then when he took to serious bhakti and started executing the limbs, sometimes he was able to do so. Sometimes he is not able to do so. Ganatvam taralatvam. Sometimes his bhakti is dense, intense. Taralatvam sometimes diluted. This is exactly like the condition of the young lad who is studying Shastra. His study is sometimes deep and intense. Whereas, Kadachit Tad Artha Pravesha Asamarthataya Sarasyanudayena Shthilascha. Sometimes due to A, not understanding the subject matter, or due to B, feeling a lack of taste the study gets slackened. Two of the most important reasons for a student losing Utsaha are mentioned in this section of the Madhurya Kadambini. It's very important to analyze the two reasons that a student loses initial Utsaha. So, Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur clearly identifies the two reasons for us. We don't have to do the hard work. 
he has already done it for us he says tad artha pravesha asamartha taya not being able to enter into the subject matter is the first reason that a student loses enthusiasm second reason sarasya anudayana he doesn't feel sarasata sarasata means he doesn't feel a taste sometimes a person understands the entire subject the student understands what he the entire concepts but the subject appears so tasteless to him that he doesn't want to progress in that subject at all so he knows the general road map of the subject what syllabus i have to study how i have to progress he knows the entire road map but doesn't actually end up studying the chapters in detail the subject is appears very dry to him so there are two problems two reasons why it's high lost first somebody doesn't know the road map in the first place that person loses utsa second a person knows the road map but is feeling a lack of taste that person also loses utsa these are the two major reasons for losing initial enthusiasm in bhakti now we will try to see both these reasons today the first reason is the most prominent reason for individuals losing utsah after practicing bhakti initially for a few days because everything was new for the first time we had we heard the philosophy so it was new for the first time we tasted prashadam everything was new for the first time we had hari naam sankirtan it was all blissful now after the initial taste was there and the newness went away then we have to keep finding some newness within krishna bhakti now since this newness novelty is not to be found so easily therefore a devotee gets stuck and unfortunately he is not able to understand the entire subject matter of devotional service what is the process of bhakti all about and sometimes unfortunately there is nobody to guide the devotee then after a few years of remaining stagnant like this the devotee starts thinking i think this is what it was all about you know this is what it was there is nothing beyond this so let's let me just you know do the rounds every sunday attend the temple program come back mentally switched off he has lost his utsah this is one of the most important reasons for devotees losing utsah today we have to understand what caused this and how do we come out of it there's a very elegant solution to this dear devotees so first reason is not being able to understand the path second reason is we understand the path but we find no taste at all so these two reasons dear devotees now first is inability to understand the path itself this is the most prominent reason now shrila vishwanath chakravarti thakur says actually people do not sometimes even understand the first step of bhakti the first step of bhakti shraddha because shri rupa goswami has said in the sikh progression of bhakti adau shraddha shraddha is faith that is how it is translated in english shraddha means faith now sometimes if we ask devotees faith in what so devotees will give various answers Nameshwar, can you give some answers that devotees quote for this? What is shraddha? What does shraddha mean? Faith in what? Ah, uh, shraddha shabde vishvas ka hai sudra dhanish chai. Um, that you have all success and you attain anything you could possibly desire simply by engaging fully in bhakti. Okay, very nice. So shraddha is faith in the process. That is what shraddha is defined. so this is how shraddha is defined in many many times shraddha is defined like that shrila vishwanath chakravarti thakur says that many times the student is unable to understand because he is given shraddha in the entire process of bhakti 
so he is not able to fixate his shraddha on one specific point. He has to fix his. There has to be a central point of the circle. All the entire process is like the circle, but he has to fix his shraddha on one point. Namishwar Prabhu, fixing shraddha on what? Shraddha exactly in one particular entity. What is that entity? Your spiritual master. Okay, this answer is given frequently. So, many other answers are given. Spiritual master. Some devotees say shraddha faith in the holy name. Some devotees say shraddha in so many other, you know, processes of bhakti. Sri Lavishwana Chakravarti Thakur says, let's get the correct understanding of shraddha right now. So, please, dear devotees, let's understand how to get the first step correct. Shila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says, Tatra Bhakti Adhikarinaha Prathamam Shraddha. The first step of progress for sadhakas is Shraddha. What is that? Sacha Tat Tat Chastrarthe Dridha Pratyayamai. This Shraddha takes the form of firm faith in the Shastras that speak of Bhakti. So Shraddha basically means firm faith in Bhakti Shastra. That firm faith in the message of Shastras is known as Shraddha. We execute Bhakti. Why do we do that? Because Shastra says so. We perform chanting of holy names. Who said that we should chant holy names in the age of Kali? Dhameshwar Prabhu. Who says? Kali Center and Upanishad. Right. Lots of uh, all Shastras. <laughs> really Shastra Bhagavatam. Says. Okay. Yeah. Who gives the holy name? From where did we get the holy name from? From the devotees. Yeah, that it is that you got. But originally, the holy name is present where? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yeah, but he got it from there is a guru parampara, but it is found in Shastra. The mantras are originally revealed in Shastra, Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, and the other mantras are revealed in Shastra. Everything that is to be done in bhakti is to be done because Shastra says that it is to be done. This is the central point of all Shraddha. There may be, one may have Shraddha in holy name, one may have Shraddha in spiritual master, one may have Shraddha in so many things. But the central point of Shraddha is Shastra. Srila Prabhupada used to often say, that we decide who is a bona fide incarnation of Lord and who is not a bona fide incarnation of Lord. But on the basis of what, Dhameshwar Prabhu? Shastra. Shastra. So, we decide what are the characteristics of bona fide Guru, what are the characteristics of a bogus Guru. On basis of what, Dhameshwar Prabhu? Shastra. So, Prabhu, Guru certifies Shastra or Shastra certifies Guru? Shastra certifies Guru. All right. So, in the tripod of Sadhu, Guru and Shastra, which limb is the most independent limb that certifies the other limbs? Shastra. So, that is the main point of Shraddha that we should have. So, when we are introduced to Krishna Bhakti, the devotee who is introducing us to Krishna Bhakti should ensure that they cultivate our Shraddha, our faith in Shastra, in the message of Shastra. This is the most important service that a devotee who is cultivating new people can do. Because it is very important that they have Shraddha in an eternal entity. There are two eternal entities, Shri Krishna and Shastra. And in these two eternal living entities, we should have faith. But between these two, Shastra is the first entity to be invested with one's faith. And Srila Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur, then he also says, Prakramyamana yatnaika nidana rupa tad vishayakatvaika nirvaha rupa sadhar sprihacha. Shraddha also means to have an earnest desire to carry out all the other limbs of bhakti. But as mentioned in Shastra. So somebody may make up a new limb of bhakti. But 
If it is not mentioned in Shastra, we do not accept it as a bona fide limb of bhakti. For example, today I may say, you know, this computer is very helpful for me in my service. So I will tomorrow start worshipping the computer and I will call it a limb of my devotional service. Dhameshwar Prabhu, am I bona fide or not bona fide when I say this? <laughs> not bona fide. Why? Worshipping your computer? Yeah. <laughs> Why would you worship your computer? He's helping me in my service. <laughs> but <laughs> the, the service to Krishna, not for the, the computer. But who decides what is bona fide service and what is not bona fide service? The Shastra. Yes. So that is the central point of our Shuddha. Otherwise, what will happen? Every leader will make his own small cult in which they will have their own separate rules and regulations. And sometimes when newcomers are not introduced properly, that is what happens with them. They end up thinking in ways which are unfavorable to Shastra. And sometimes they end up putting faith not prominently in Shastra, but prominently in things besides Shastra. And when those things fall, then his Shraddha also falls. This faith also falls. Therefore, it is very important to understand that Shraddha should be rooted in Shastra. Shastra Shraddha is Shraddha. And this is the first step to ensure that our foundation will be strong. And then we will be able to increase our Utsaha nicely. Shri Jiva Goswami also says the same thing in Bhakti Rasamrit Sindhu commentary. Shri Jiva Goswami says, Shastrartha Vishwas Eva Shraddha Iti Labdhe Shraddha Taratamyena Shraddha Vatam Taratamyam He says, when it is clearly known, Labdhe and established, Shastra Artha Vishwas, that implicit faith in what? In the message of Shastra is known as Shraddha. Hmm? Then we can categorize devotees on the basis of Shraddha. Next step is to understand that devotees are categorized according to the degree of Shraddha that they have. Different devotees fall in different categories based on the Shraddha that they have. Now somebody may ask Shraddha in what? Shraddha in Shastra. The answer to this, the eternal answer to this given by our Acharyas. Shastra Artha Vishwasa Eva Shraddha. That Shraddha faith is in the message of scriptures. Scripture says worship the deity. So we worship the deity. Scripture says chant Harinam. So we chant Harinam. Scripture says take a bath in the morning. So we take a bath in the morning. Scripture says even though the conch shell is impure bone, but you still touch it and blow it every morning. You will not become impure. So we do that. So dear devotees, we are doing exactly what Shastra is saying, knowingly or unknowingly. So we should directly put our faith in the message of devotional Shastra. So accordingly to the degree that we have implicit faith in the message of Shastra, to that degree we are advancing in our bhajan. To that degree we will avoid stagnation. To that degree, we will have enthusiasm in our process of bhajan. Sri Rupa Goswami has therefore said that amongst all those who are Shraddhavan, Shraddhavan means faithful. Faithful in what? In Bhakti Shastra, there are three types of devotees. We have heard the names of three types of devotees. Kanishtha Adhikari, Madhyam Adhikari, Uttam Adhikari. So they are categorized on the basis of what? On the basis of Shraddha. And what is that Shraddha in? Shraddha in Shastra Artha, in the meaning of Shastra. Dear devotees, please note very importantly, I am not saying expertise of Shastra. I am saying faith in the message of Shastra. Somebody may not be very expert, but they can be faithful. I am not, as, I am not saying that everybody has to be a big scholar. No, no, no. Everybody has to have implicit faith in the message of Shastra. Now, Sri Jiva Goswami and Rupa Goswami say in the Bhakti Rasamrit Sindhu, who is the Kanishthadikari? This person has soft faith in Shastra. His faith can be easily shaken by an opposite philosophy. And also he has negligible knowledge of Shastra. So this person becomes known as Kanishthadikari. Second is Madhyamadikari. He has stronger faith in Shastra, 
and better knowledge of Shastra. And the highest is Uttamadhikari. Very strong faith in Shastra and elaborate knowledge of Shastra. Dear devotees, Jeeva Goswami said, we, first we establish what is Shraddha. Shraddha means faith in Shastra. Now, to the degree of the faith that one has and to the degree of expertise one has, the di different devotees are categorized in different manners. So, you see, when Kanishtha, Madhyam and Uttam Adhikaris are categorized, they are categorized according to their Shraddha in Shastra and their knowledge of the conclusions of Shastra. So, these two things are very important. Dear devotees, if these things are set correctly in the very beginning of one's bhakti, it will become very easy to know the entire roadmap. And once a person knows the entire roadmap, he knows what step one has to take next. And new things keep coming. Shastra will give you enthusiasm after enthusiasm each and every day. New things to think about. Dear devotees, in this entire series on Upadeshamritam, Amishwar Prabhu, you can tell me how many times have I repeated a verse or a concept? Uh, this is new content every time. And this will continue to occur till the end of the series. I, I am able to get unlimited content, unlimited newness in my practice of Krishna Bhakti because I am relying on one central authority, that is Shastra, which is giving me unlimited new content about Krishna Bhakti. The names of Krishna come from Shastra. The description of forms of Krishna come from Shastra. The descriptions of qualities of Krishna come from Shastra. The description of pastimes of Krishna comes from Shastra. The description of associates of Krishna comes from Shastra. Is there anything which Shastra doesn't cover? All aspects of devotional life are covered in Shastra. So unlimited enthusiasm, the source of unlimited enthusiasm is Shastra. Dear devotees, if we are feeling unenthusiastic, there is only one reason for it. The reason is we don't have novelty, newness in our bhakti. This newness, as soon as it is introduced, immediately you will have enthusiasm. How do you get newness each and every day? You need a source of newness that is unlimited. Is there a source of unlimited novelty, unlimited newness? Yes. What source is that? Shastra. Dear devotees, Sri Jiva Goswami composed four lakh verses. Four lakh verses pertaining to Krishna Bhakti. Rameshwar Prabhu, in a year there are 365 days. If a person lives for 10 years, it will be 3650 days. So Prabhu, that is 10 years. 3650 days. And 100 years, 36,500 days. Can a person study 4 lakh verses in 36,500 days? How much is a lakh? Uh, 4 and 5 zeros after it. 4? You want me to do the math? Approximately. <laughs> okay. 4 and then one, 5 zeros. Yeah. And the total number of days that one has is approximately 40,000. 1 zero less. So, Prabhu, okay. is it easily possible to cover 4 lakh verses in 40,000 days? Uh, I got 10. So, 10 verses a day for... Yeah. Prabhu, if you huh, for 100 years, if you study 10 verses a day, you will cover everything that Sri Jeeva Goswami has written. How does that sound? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Then comes Srila Rupa Goswami with an additional 2 lakh verses. And then Sri Sanatan Goswami and all the other Acharyas, Sri Vishwanath, Chakravarti, Thakur and all of them combined, it is impossible, dear devotees, impossible to finish this entire you know, big project of Godiya Vaishnavism. Unlimited enthusiasm right here, served on a plate for all of you. So, therefore, I am saying, please get the foundations correct. Shraddha means Shraddha in Shastra. And that Shraddha in Shastra will keep giving you newness each and every day. On a single day, you can study 10 new concepts. Imagine that to digest those concepts 
and to be able to harmonize those concepts will take a long time but you your mind will be blissfully engaged and this is what is known as utsaha dear devotees blissful engagement in the limbs of bhakti shastra will teach you new concepts new limbs of bhakti and how to execute them so dear devotees all of this will be as firmly established if we get our first step correct where to put shraddha unfortunately sometimes devotees put shraddha not in shastra but in some other places therefore shrila prabhupad says that a person who is not able to tell his followers to put shraddha in the correct place such a person cannot guide his followers properly in the commentary to nectar of instruction shrila prabhupad will say that a person who is not expert enough who is not faithful enough in shastra cannot become a proper guide this may be a bitter pill for many of us to bite but it is given by our founder acharya so let's see what he wants to tell all of us thameshwar prabhu kindly read what shrila prabhupad says a neophyte kanishta vaishnava or a vaishnava situated on the intermediate platform madhyama can also accept disciples but such disciples must be on the same platform and it should be understood that they cannot advance very well towards the ultimate goal of life under his insufficient guidance therefore a disciple should be careful to accept to accept an uttama adhikari as a spiritual master yes dear devotees a neophyte kanishtha or a madhyam vaishnav can also accept disciples prabhupad says but such disciples will remain on the same platform and it should be understood that they cannot advance very well towards the ultimate goal of his life under his insufficient guidance dameshwar prabhu what is insufficient in the kanishtha madhyam their faith and knowledge of the shastra exactly shri rupa goswami had very clearly said this so what is insufficient in the kanishtha and madhyam adhikari is their faith and their knowledge of shastra conclusion and bhakti shastra therefore when the di- disciple is in trouble and they approach their guide and they say prabhu you are my shiksha guru i am asking you this query prabhu you know please tell me what to do in this situation so because they don't have the perfect answer from shastra therefore they give some other answer so this is like giving a you know this is like giving a, what is it paracetamol for every disease you know it's like uh, uh, aspirin for every disease so you just uh, everybody every patient comes to you you say you know you take aspirin second patient comes to you with a different problem take aspirin third patient comes take aspirin so sometimes you see a devotee may be there who may be acting as a shiksha guru but because he is situated on kanishtha or madhyam platform when his the person whom he is guiding comes to him and asks him a problem he says oh, bro, don't worry you just uh, chant a few extra rounds your problem will be solved and you know another person comes with no don't worry just chant a few extra rounds your problem will be solved everything will be solved but chanting is not for solving material problems chanting is for krishna prem he needed a specific solution from shastra which this person was not able to give so he is giving generic medicine for every problem so this is the issue with the guidance of kanishtha or madhyam adhikaris and this is the reason why those who are under them they fail to find utsaha in their spiritual life and therefore shila prabhupa says therefore disciples should be very careful that one of the gurus either the shiksha guru or the diksha guru one of the gurus should be situated on the uttam platform because if they have that guru that guru will become their most prominent guru and that guru will be able to guide them all the way till the last point they will be able to guide them how does that guidance sound to somebody who knows the entire path who will tell you an exact solution for your problem and who is able to guide you all the way till the last step how does that guide sound to really uh, reassuring and uh, wonderful yes and suppose you are taking a long trail somewhere in the woods and a person only knows half the way after that you have to figure it out how does that sound really troublesome yes so this is the condition of those who are under the quote and quote insufficient guidance of the kanishthar madhyam adhikari dear devotees <clears throat> therefore krishna says in the bhagavad gita that there are three types of people who will fail in spiritual life fail in spiritual life 
a direct message of failure in the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna says in fourth chapter, verse number 40, Agyas chai shraddhadhan ascha samshayatma vinashyati. He says, but agya, those who are ignorant, cha ashraddhadhan ascha, and faithless people, and samshayatma, and the doubtful, who doubt what? And Prabhupada writes there also, it's not in the original Sanskrit, but Prabhupada mentions it there. Who doubt what? The revealed scriptures. Dhameshwar Prabhu, is there anything mentioning Shastra in the original verse? No, it doesn't specify. Right. But this is Srila Prabhupada's translation. And Srila Prabhupada says that Ashraddha, those who are faithless, faithless in what? And Prabhupada clearly specifies in the revealed scriptures. Such people do not attain God consciousness. Krishna says they will fall down because they do not know the conclusions of Shabda Praman, Shastra Praman. They will face lack of enthusiasm sooner or later because sooner or later their path will be completely dark. They will not be able to make out which way to progress. Although it's said on the path of bhakti, you can run with your eyes closed. I have said it in the past, but you need a guide to tell you where to run. So you can run with your eyes closed, provided you have a guide who has his eyes open. So dear devotees, if the guide is also closed in his eyes, and if the follower is also closed in his eyes, then it is very difficult to progress on the path. Then most likely we will get stuck. And a person who gets stuck because of ignorance, a person who knows what is the path but is faithless, such people will not attain success. <clears throat> Therefore, we need a source of automatic enthusiasm and progress. And that source is the Uttam Adhikari devotee. Such an association with such a devotee immediately opens the gate to progress. When you come in contact with such a devotee, you will receive such a strong dose of Krishna Bhakti that you will have no choice, but you will feel the progress entering into your lives. Kapil Muni very clearly says this in the third canto. Very nice verse. Satam prasangan mamavirya samvido bhavanti hritkarna rasayana katha tajjoshanadashvapavarga vartmani shraddharatir bhaktira nukramishyati Satam prasangan Prabhupada translates in the association of pure devotees Uttam Adhikaris. What will happen? Mamavirya samvido Discussion of pastimes and activities of Bhagavan Bhavanti Hritkarana Rasayana. Direct Krishna consciousness will take place. Very satisfying to the ear. The Joshanad, by tasting, by cultivating such knowledge, Apavarga Vartmani, one starts walking on the path of liberation. And gradually progress happens. And the steps are clearly mentioned in the verse itself. See, dear devotees, Kapil Muni mentions directly the stages of Bhakti. Shraddha, Ratir, Bhaktir, Anukramishyati. Then these things immediately fall in line. First, you will get Shraddha. Second, you will get Rati. You will get attachment to Bhagavan. Third, Bhakti, you will get Prema. Bhakti here means Prema. So first, you will get Shraddha. Second, you will get attachment to Bhagavan. Third, you will end up attaining the goal. You will become the Sadhu that you were associating with. And this will be the perfection of your bhajan. So simple. The solution is very simple. To develop Utsaha. We should be in contact with an Uttam Adhikari because the Uttam Adhikari is full of Utsaha. He is punching Utsaha left, right and center. The moment you come in contact with Uttam Adhikari, you will feel the strong punch of Utsaha coming towards you. And when you become immediately transformed by this strong Utsaha for days and days altogether, you are able to execute your bhakti. Your devotees, this is the effect of coming in contact with a genuine Bhagavat, genuine devotee of Bhagavan. Therefore, Srila Prabhupada says that every sadhak has some duty. I'm, it's such a nice purport by Srila Prabhupada in Srimad Bhagavatam. Tameshwar Prabhu, I would like you to read. Please read, Prabhuji. A third class devotee, therefore, has to receive the instructions of devotional service from the authoritative sources of Bhagavata. The number one Bhagavata is the established personality of devotee, and the other Bhagavata is the message of Godhead. 
The third class devotee, therefore, has to go to the personality of devotee in order to learn the instructions of devotional service. Perfect. So it's so important to understand that Srila Prabhupada said the Kanishtha devotee, he has no choice but to approach the first class devotee. It's very clearly written here in black and white. You have to approach the first class devotee in order to advance on the path of bhajan. Now, some people say, I will approach the book and I will take all my advancement from the book. Now, Prabhupada very clearly says there are two Bhagavatas. One is the book Bhagavata, one is the devotee Bhagavata. And in order to advance, it is not sufficient simply to approach the book Bhagavata. You have to approach the person, the living representative of the Srimad Bhagavatam, the top class devotee of Bhagavan Shri Krishna. This is what Srila Prabhupada says. Somebody may say, well, uh, my, my senior devotee didn't tell me this. My devotee, my senior devotee didn't tell me to have Shraddha in Shastra. So I will ignore this instruction. I will do what my senior devotee said. And then what happens after that is also described by Srila Prabhupada. Those who ignore Shastra Shraddha, what happens to them after some time? Nameshwar Prabhu, kindly read. A sincere devotee must, therefore, be prepared to hear the Vedic literatures like the Upanishads, Vedanta, and other literatures left by the previous authorities or Goswamis for the benefit of his progress. Without hearing such literature, one cannot make actual progress. And without hearing and following the instructions, the show of devotional service becomes worthless and therefore a sort of disturbance in the path of devotional service. Unless, therefore, Devotional service is established on the principles of Shruti, Smriti, Purana, and Pancharatra authorities. The make show of devotional service uh, should at once be rejected. So very clearly, Srila Prabhupada says here, unless one hears Shastra from the devotees, One's own devotional service will become a disturbance in the path of one's devotional service. He says it very clearly here. One's own show of the one will keep keep making a show of devotional service. And that show of devotional service will become a disturbance in the path of actual devotional service. Therefore, no matter who says, whosoever says against Shastra, if a person puts our faith against Shastra, then that person his opinion is not to be accepted. A true guide is a person who inculcates faith in the message of the Shastra. Dameshwar Prabhu, in all the incarnations of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, of all the avatars of Bhagwan, we celebrate their appearance day. But there is one incarnation whose appearance day we don't celebrate. We don't fast on the appearance day of one incarnation. Dameshwar Prabhu, which incarnation do we not fast? I can think of a few we don't formally celebrate, but I'm going to guess the one that we would purpose not celebrate is Mohini Murti. Uh, no, Mohini Murti is still. No, there is a there is one prominent incarnation we purposely don't fast on his appearance day. Looks like the other devotees got the answer, Lord Buddha. Yes. Is that right? Yes. So, Dameshwar Prabhu, did you ever fast on Buddha Purnima after becoming a devotee? No. <laughs> it's not on the Vaishnava calendar? No, actually. Yeah. So, there is a reason why fasting is not done on Buddha Purnima. The reason why fasting is not done on Buddha Purnima is because Buddha spoke against Shastra Shraddha. Amongst all the incarnations of Bhagwan, there is one incarnation who ended up speaking against Shastra who rejected the Vedas. That incarnation is Buddha. Shri Jeev Goswami says in his Sarva Sambadini commentary to Tattva Sandarbha, Na cha buddhasya api ishwaratve sati tad vakyam cha pramanam syad. Even though Buddha is an incarnation of Bhagwan, his words are not authoritative for us. So, if even Bhagwan speaks against Shastra, we will reject that Bhagwan. And we will not fast on his appearance day. That is the importance of Shastra. That is the importance of inculcating faith in Shastra. Even if Bhagwan tries to deviate us 
from Shastriya Shraddha. We will not believe in that incarnation of Bhagwan, and we will not fast on his appearance day and we will not celebrate any festivals related to him. So that is the importance of inculcating Shastriya Shraddha because the gateway of progress opens through Shastra Shraddha. And otherwise, if a person doesn't have that Shraddha, then one's Shraddha will be in other things and then that is not labeled as Shraddha in the Bhakti Rasamrit Sindhu and other bona fide literature. So this was first type of Shraddha, dear devotees. The first type of lack of Utsaha, a person doesn't know what is the path ahead. So that is cleared by getting proper guidance from Shastra, ideally from a devotee who is Uttamadhikari. Now, in some cases, it may be that an Uttamadhikari may not be present in one's vicinity to guide one. It may be the case. One may not be able to find. Even in such a case, one should still associate with the devotees. One should continue to self-study the Shastra and one should definitely pray to Bhagavan to send the association of an Uttam Adhikari in one's life. There is no replacement for such association. Dear devotees, there are no shortcuts around such association. So, even if such association is not immediately available, we have to make sure that by praying to Bhagavan, good fortune ultimately arises in our lives in the form of the presence of the Mahabhagavat Uttam Adhikari devotee who will guide us all the way through the lens of the Shastra. Now, second is, a devotee got a proper Guru. And after getting a proper Guru, he got all the guidance. This devotee knows the entire path. He has now understood the path. But still, sometimes, due to lack of taste, you know, it hinders his Utsaha. So, as I said, there are two, as Srila Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur had pointed out, two reasons for losing Utsa. First is, the student, you know, doesn't understand the subject matter. Second is, he understands, but he feels a lack of taste. So, first we covered. Second is, he feels a lack of taste. Srila Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur says, so a person has now entered into Bhakti, he has Shraddha, he has proper guidance. He is now executing Bhajan. Bhajan means the various limbs of bhakti, Shravanam, Kirtanam. This is in general known as bhajan. So he's executing bhajan. But he says that still there are many obstacles that occur due to lack of taste and they reduce his utsa. What are that? He says, Tatra layaha kirtana shravana smaraneshu uttareshu adhikyena nidrodgama. He says, during unsteady bhajan, even though one knows the path, but something is seen. First is lay. What is Laya? Feel sleep and laziness while performing his Shravan and Kirtan. So he knows he has to do this. He has full faith. He knows the message of Shastra. He knows which Shastra he has to read. He understands it. But even he starts doing it, laziness and sleep come to him. So this devotee is still in a much better position than the person who is misguided about Shastra. Somebody doesn't know what is to be done in Bhakti. That person is unfortunate. He's fortunate because he is a devotee, but still his fortune has to increase. But this devotee is much more fortunate. He knows what is to be done, but still he has lay, sleep, laziness while performing Shravan Kirtan. He says, Vikshepa Steshu Vyabaharika Varta Samparka. Then second is Vikshepa. So sometimes during Shravan Kirtan, he comes in contact with material subject matter. He's trying to uh, chant his japa nicely. Suddenly the mobile rings. Hari Bol Prabhu, how are you? Let's go to a baseball match on Saturday. So, suddenly while performing his uh, Shravan Kirtan, etc., he comes in contact with material subject matters. Third is Apratipati. First two are absent. But yet one is in general feeling disinterested in to engage in activities of Shravan Kirtan. One is not lazy. One is not, you know, coming in contact with some material engagement. In general, one becomes disinclined. Third, fourth is Kashai. He performs bhajan, is actively, but negative qualities, anger, lust, they rise during activities of bhajan, shravan, kirtan, etc. And fifth is Rasaswad. Sometimes he performs shravan, kirtan. He knows what is the goal. He knows the message of Shastra. He is advancing. 
but uh, is he is unable to perform it nicely because material pleasures are automatically coming to him so he is thinking about them and not able to focus on his bhajan so all these things are <laughs> cause of unsteady bhajan and but please remember this devotee is more advanced than the person who lacks the basic shraddha in shastra first thing is get the shrad get your shraddha correct shraddha should be placed in shastra shastra shraddha is shraddha and somebody who has shastra shraddha and is performing bhajan he also sometimes may lose utsah because of these five factors now these five will be overcome gradually it will take some time there is a reason why bhakti is sudurlabha it is one of the six qualities of bhakti is it is difficult to achieve rare to achieve because even if somebody knows the path there are still some obstacles which will hinder his utsah so shri vishwanath chakruti thakur says don't worry at least your position is better than the person who is you know doesn't have his shraddha in the proper place so don't worry you continue to engage in activities of bhajan give it some time let the mango ripen because now you know the path now you will not deviate here and there now you know the path so give it proper time give it proper attention and continue don't fall down from this continue the process due course of time the first step in determined bhajan will come and when determined bhajan comes gradually then one will experience the first first uh, ray of bhava bhakti or devotional service in ecstasy towards bhagwan shri krishna continue this dear devotee no problem and you may feel some lack of enthusiasm because of these things oh i got such a good guru i know the entire philosophy i know what is to be done i know but i am not able to do it because of lack of taste don't worry continue to do what you are doing and give it some time some things need time please try to understand some things need time to fructify so don't expect instant coffee one of the six qualities of bhakti is sudurlabha take some time right but you are on the correct path so if you defeat your lethargy through good association you will immediately be able to attain success in this life shri vyasadev says in the bhagavatam sango yah samsriter hetur asatsu vihito dhiya sa eva sadhu shukrito ne sangatvaya kalpate as dhameshwar prabhu had suggested remedy for lack of utsah is to have proper association and we elaborated upon that by saying proper association means association of whom so association of an uttam adhikari shila prabhupad very clearly says and such association is the best association shri vyasadev says sango yah samsrite hetu association for sense gratification is certainly the path of bondage but sa eva sadhu shukrito same type of association performed with a saintly person nisanga swaya kalpate leads to the path of liberation even if performed without much knowledge so initially we may not have knowledge but in coming in association with sadhu we will immediately develop all that knowledge so dear devotees this is very important finally associate with devotees who have utsah you know sometimes we may not have utsah some other devotees around us may have utsah so those devotees who have utsah who are uttam adhikaris they are the best association dear devotees utsah bantah purusha durbala balinam ripum anishyanti hi samyata tathaite pancha kunjaram is a nice verse people may individually be weak but when they get together and become full of utsah then they can conquer the mightiest of enemies exactly like five weak humans who can get together and manage to kill an entire elephant dear devotees in this way please keep your association very nice with devotees who are ideally uttam adhikaris when you come in contact with them you will feel one thing immediately an immediate punch of utsah comes your way first first symptom of coming in contact with an uttam adhikari an immediate punch of utsah comes your way and you like to get punched by that, such a person so dear devotees whenever you find such a person immediately understand that good association we must associate with such a person why shraddha is in the proper place 
understood. This person understood what is the path. This person knows what it is. Therefore, we must definitely associate with such a person. And whosoever speaks against Shastra Shraddha, even if it is Bhagwan himself, can be neglected. Dear devotees, this is the royal highway of progress. I hope that all of you get to run on this royal highway of progress that is specified in the Shastra by Aracharyas. With this, I'll pause my speech here. Thank you very much, dear devotees. Yadatras khalitam kinchit vidvam sahapura yantutat. Yadatras saushtavam kinchit tad guru reva me nahi. Yadatras khalitam kinchit. Are there any mistakes in what I said? Vidvam sah, you are learned devotees. You can say, no, 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 Shastra, Shraddha is not Shastra Shraddha. You can correct any mistakes that I have made. But you pr provide Shastra Praman. <laughs> Again, the proof you have to give is from Shastra. But Yadatra Saushtavam Kinchit. If there's anything nice in the class, please remember. Tad Guru Reva. Belongs to Guru Janas. What did the Guru Janas give me? They gave me Shastra. That is what I got from the Guru Janas. What did Srila Prabhupada give us? Prabhupada gave Shastra. So it belongs to them. Me nahi. Doesn't belong to me. Thank you very much, dear devotees. Thank you, Kameshwar Prabhu. Jagat Guru Shula Prabhupada ki jai. Shula Rupa Goswami Prabhupada ki jai. Shula Jeeva Goswami Prabhupada ki jai. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Hare Prasha Prabhu. What a beautiful presentation. Um, artistically. And I was really blown away by that. Um, gave me so many insights and it was so practical. I think that was really wonderful. <laughs> Thank you so much. So we'll go to questions now. And I know it's uh, we're started later. It looks like there's a ton of questions too. And so if it's late for you in India, no, no, it's, and you it's need to not, get to bed. It's, no, no, it's not late for me. Tomorrow is Sunday. I'll wake up early, but there's no pressure on me. You know, because, okay. because my son doesn't for any of the devotees food. though yeah. if it's late for yeah. them yeah you know you can log off anytime and and watch the question and answer later sure. Sure. um but yeah so we'll go with questions i'll call on people try to focus on the content of the class keep it short by not explaining a lot but try to just put it in your question and we'll give everyone a chance to ask ask one question before we go on for seconds for anyone anything else i missed probably yeah, sometimes devotees will please and I have a follow up question. So please wait for please wait for a second. <laughs> I'll, I'll interrupt you. So pardon me for yeah. being rude, but I'll, I'll interrupt second question. Right. Okay, so we have first Bhavya Bhagavan Prabhu. Yeah, just a minute. We'll have to ask everybody to unmute. Yeah. Yeah, Hare Krishna Prabhu. Um, I was looking for this class on enthusiasm, Prabhu. And I mean, you made a very nice point, like, we do get this feeling, can I get the enthusiasm, which I had when I joined Bhakti? I think that that was one point made by Bhakti Dida Modar Maharaj also in a class. Right. Yeah, so that's very relatable, Prabhu. Prabhuji, I have a question, like you mentioned, like, uh, you mentioned five reasons due to which we lose enthusiasm. So, Prabhuji, you mentioned that uh, there is some distraction or we get uh, into lust, greed, anger, whatever. So, Prabhu, when we know we are giving into lust, greed, anger, or we are getting distracted for whatever reason, so then what happens is enthusiasm drastically goes down. I, right. I heard in a talk that if we subtly also break the rules, Anna, if we subtly enjoy some opposite sex, whatever, right? So that really brings down the enthusiasm level drastically. So Prabhu, is there a Shastric reference for that? And how do we really cope up with that? Because you said ki it's a gradual process. It will take time. But uh, I mean, sometimes we become too hopeless. Prabhu. Yeah, sure. So the query is that you've heard in some places that even if you subtly associate with and the opposite gender, you, you, you lose your bhajan and your mind goes down. I understand, and there are pramanas in Shastra for that. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, even if one thinks about a wooden doll, it is unfavorable for a sannyasi. Yeah. So there are many pramanas like that in Shastra. But the thing is, should our prachar, should our preaching be focused so much on the negatives or should we give some enthusiasm to the devotees when they come in contact with us? I could give a class all long, all day long about what is wrong with lust and how you will fall down if you 
engage in activity X or activity Y. At the end of the day, if I am not able to give you a solution and if I am not able to leave you more enthusiastic towards bhajan than when you joined the class, it means I have made your life more unfavorable towards bhajan. So the characteristic of a good speaker is that the audience should always be given a nice solution. Now the nice solution is, since you are already executing bhajan kriya, have why not try executing bhajan kriya on its full volume with complete in-depth you know support of shastra and directly hearing name form qualities and pastimes of bhagwan why not take the strongest dose possible every day my first question is are we doing that every single day are we taking the strongest possible dose of shastriya shraddha and name form qualities of pastimes of bhagwan every day so what is the answer yes or no yes Rosie. You're taking the strongest possible. Ah, uh, not the strongest, but whatever uh, possible in my capacity. Yeah. So, Others know. <laughs> yeah. So if by your capacity you are doing, then you are not elevating yourself. Somebody else's capacity is stronger than you. Then it will be easily possible for you. So every day we have to come in contact with a devotee who is much stronger than us. Last time I specified Swato Vare, somebody who is much superior than us. And from that person, you take association regularly. Regularly. Hear from them regularly. And every day you should get to hear something new about Bhagwan. Srila Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur said, these newspapers of the world outside are stale newspapers. We can produce thousands of newspapers every day and every subject matter will be different and we will not touch the same subject matter twice. Guaranteed. 100% guaranteed. Now, if we are not doing that in Krishna consciousness, if we are not maintaining the novelty and uh, this, if what we are doing is just doing the same thing over and over again without novelty and that if we are calling that as a strong dose of bhajan, I am sorry, that is not what it is. A strong dose means every day there should be something new. Is there something new every day that you are learning? Something new and revolutionary that you are learning every day. So that question you ask yourself. And if the answer to that is no, it means you have to take a stronger dose. Right? Rosie, what, what happens is... Uh, it we'll is move on to the next the person. Intellect. We can come back it to is... you above you, Bhagavan Prabhu. Yes, yes okay. that's it. Okay, thank you. Pardon me for interrupting. Um, Omkara Prabhu. Yeah, I will I have to ask him to unmute just a minute. Uh, yes, true. Hare Krishna Prabhu Dhanat Prana. Uh, uh, we see sometimes that some uh, Uttam Adhikaris, Sadhus, uh, they behave differently. Some Uttam Adhikaris uh, may not give such detailed knowledge, although they do have to their uh, general disciples. And some Uttamadhikaris, we see that uh, they are more like pushing the disciples more than they can do. Mm -hmm. So this is a difference we can see in the nature of Uttamadhikaris. Sometimes some sadhu will think that, okay, it's fine. It's not his nature. So let's leave him. But there are some sadhus who may force him a little bit. Mm -hmm. So it, it's sometimes difficult to understand uh, why it does. I mean, why do they uh, do like that? Because both of them know the conclusions and have realized it. Right. So if a particular sadhu has good knowledge of the conclusions, but if he is pushing somebody, then it means there is something regarding Niyamagraha that is going on. The disciple is not able to accept the instructions, but he is being fed much more than what he can accept at this point of time. His maturity is not right now at that particular level. So he is being asked to do something which is beyond his capacity. So the disciple, if he accepts such an instruction, there is a possibility of Niyamagraha. In such a case, the disciple should honestly come to that, you know, Shiksha Guru or Diksha Guru and say that right now it is really getting over my head. So maybe, you know, a, an instruction of a lower caliber can be given to me. Arjun did that in the Bhagavad Gita when he said it's difficult to control the mind like it's difficult to control the wind. So similarly, one can say that frankly to the spiritual master. The good spiritual master reduces the volume but allows the disciple to continue progress. That is the answer to the query. I hope this satisfies you. Uh, yes, Rova. I'll ask it later. Some point. Okay, sure. <laughs> Next, we have Anusha Yamol. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Uh, 
Yes. I hope I said that right. Hare Krishna, Prabhu, Dhanavad Pranam. Thank you for such beautiful class. I have a question on uh, how can we develop such firm faith in Shastras? Like we are new devotees and uh, like for me, it is very uh, difficult to like have firm faith in Shastra and like Gorgon Maya used to say, we have to, we have, we should have firm faith in Sadhu Guru Shastra. So how can we develop that? Yeah. So how do we develop firm faith in Shastra? By gradually realizing that whatever we are doing in our bhakti is actually based on Shastra Brahman. Whatever we are doing in our devotional activities has originally come from Shastra and some details have been given by Sadhus. Shastra says one should chant Harinam. Sadhus give the detail 16 rounds. So the injunction comes from the Shastra the details are given by the sadhus and guru. When we realize that this is true about all aspects of devotional service, when we realize that Shastra has a solution for each and every issue that will arise in our bhajan as well as in our other aspects of life, we will know that such Shastra is actually our true friend. Therefore, when Sri Sanatan Goswami in his Sri Krishna Leela Stav, he starts glorifying Srimad Bhagavatam. In the Krishna Leela Sahib, Sri Sanatan Goswami says, Madek Bandho. Actually, you are my only friend, O Srimad Bhagavatam. You are my only true friend. Because you are the one who is with me. You know, all the way till the end. Therefore, it's very important to understand that Shastra is going to help us till the end of our lives. And therefore, a very, very dear friend of ours. When we realize that, the importance will become clear. Most of the good solutions, they come from Shastra and little adjustment by Sadhu or Guru. So that will take definitely take some time. But in association with a good Sadhu who is following Shastra, who is quoting Shastra, who is, you know, uh, who is demonstrating Shastra in all aspects of life, we will immediately get that Shrata. That is my answer to your query. I hope it satisfies it to some extent. Next, we have Bhakti's iPhone. Okay, we ask her to unmute. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. My pronouns. This is not really a question. It's really just my gratitude. Thank you so much for exhibiting enthusiasm, determination, perseverance, and all the six qualities that has been quoted in the class, in the lecture, in the shloka today. And uh, I am, I'm telling you from the core of my heart, this is the best thing that has ever happened to me, especially in 2022, this series that has started. Uh, every time I hear a class, it's like, wow, what would I have lost in life if I did not have this knowledge that I am receiving from you? So I'm extremely grateful to you. And thank you, Dameshwar Mahaprabhu Prabhu, for having this spark of conversation. And it is... It's saving, it's saving my soul. It's saving me. And thank you, thank you, thank you. That's what I wanted to say. Thank you. The credit goes to the Guru Parampara. Actually, they are, they are very merciful. They punched me many times with enthusiasm. So I'm able to demonstrate a small semblance of what they have given me. Thank you, Bhakti Mataji. Really happy to hear this. It's been so good for you. Uh, next we have Mandri. Mataji, please unmute. Hare Krishna, thank you very much for the very nourishing session again. And my question is, could you please define what Shastra is? Because sometimes we're saying it's the works of Yasudev, but then we have books by the sadhus, these six Goswamis, we have commentaries of Srila Prabhupada. So could you please define the term Shastra when we say faith in Shastra? So, what is the meaning of the term Shastra and how do we define Shastra? So, Shastra primarily refers to Shruti, Smriti, Puran, Pancharatra. That verse of Bhakti Rasamrit Sindhu. Shruti, Smriti, Puranadi, Pancharatra. These are main Shastras that we believe in. Shruti, that is the Vedas. Smritis, the recollections of the sages. Puran, the 18. Puranas written by Vyasadeva 
and pancharatra the literature which teaches us practically what to do in day to day life of bhakti but all of this when it is favorable to krishna bhakti anukulyena krishna nu shilanam is the constant factor running through the bhakti rasamrit sindhu anukulyena krishna nu shilanam is the um, adhikar sutra there is a i am using a technical term adhikar sutra means its domain extends in the entire bhakti rasamrit sindhu so that sutra's effect is seen here also so whatever in shruti smriti purana pancharatra which is anukul to bhakti anukulena krishna anushilanam that is what we accept as shastra since smriti and uh, smriti you know uh, includes writings of the sages and acharyas are considered as sages of the parampara therefore what they write and what is favorable for bhakti gets included in that and therefore that verse is a comprehensive definer of what is shastra along with the adhikar sutra that is coming all the way through from anyabhilashita shunyam so there is something called as adhikar sutra in grammar so i maybe you are already aware but for those who are not aware i will give a small example suppose i write a traffic manual in the form of sutras so i say now first sutra now traffic rules second sutra Yeah. that now traffic rules for hungary third sutra when the signal says red stop so the first sutra's influence will now go through all the sutras i hope you are able to understand because we know that that sutra is adhikar sutra such a sutra is called adhikar sutra so when rupa goswami defines uttama bhakti anya bilashita shunyam so that is adhikar sutra its influence will run throughout bhakti rasamrit sindhu there is no verse in bhakti rasamrit sindhu which will talk about impure devotional service what will happen when your devotional service runs into troubled waters for that you have to go to madhurya kadambini but you will not find it so much in bhakti rasamrit sindhu so bhakti rasamrit sindhu is all uttama bhakti you know it's all for blue sky the sun is shining and this no rain that is bhakti rasamrit sindhu and rainy season is in madhurya kadambini so therefore <laughs> this is what you know is meaning of shastra i hope this satisfies your query to some extent so did i understand correctly that prabhupada's purports can be considered smriti is that yeah, what because, you were... uh, writings of acharyas all the acharyas which are bhajan anukul basically they are sadhus sages of our sampradaya so that gets included in it is smriti vat it is like smriti literature basically so it is included in our in our entire pantheon of literature that is what it is thank you. thank you very much next we have sandeep prabhu please unmute hello hari bol hare krishna prabhu yeah ah, hare krishna prabhu dandat pranam thank you for uh, uh, for the this class on enthusiasm and making a, our enthusiasm on accurate path prabhu uh, i have a question that uh, if uh, if any uh, uh, devotee who is uttam adhikari and uttam adhikari uh, uh, maybe he is in i mean 27 year uh, in uskon or something uh, uh, like that so uh, if he is uh, he is uh, uh, suggesting us to only only read prabhupad's books and uh, uh, the siddhant which are which has been uh, given by the uh, uh, our acharyas uh, which is not in the uh, uh, written by sula prabhat book and sometimes they uh, tell that ki don't read those kind of i mean uh, only stuck to sula prabhat's book so what is i mean that uh, that is the shastri shraddha or it is deviating uh, to some extent okay so your query is that if there is a senior devotee in our society who has been for more for decades and he or she tells us that you should read only shula prabhupada's books don't read any other books not even of the previous acharyas then what to do then you have to go to that devotee and tell him humbly that his own instructions are running into a contradiction because when we read prabhupada's books we find shrila prabhupada saying again and again 
multiple times that a serious student should read the commentaries of the previous acharyas now i will show this in its 1.1.1 of shrimad bhagavatam where shrila prabhupad says something and uh, dhameshwar prabhu uh, i would request you to read this paragraph okay Within the past 500 years, many erudite scholars and acharyas like Jiva Goswami, Sanatana Goswami, Vishwanatha Chakravarti, Vallabhacharya, and many other distinguished scholars, even after the time of Lord Chaitanya, made elaborate commentaries on the Bhagavatam. And the serious student would do well to attempt to go through them to better relish the transcendental messages. Yeah, this is right there in the commentary to the first verse of Srimad Bhagavatam. Today, I showed another commentary from 1.2.12, where Prabhupada says, if one doesn't study the literature, one cannot make actual progress. I showed that section today. And Prabhupada says, then the show of devotional service becomes a disturbance on the path of actual devotional service. It's right there. You can refer to the quote from 1.2.12, which was shown today in the class. You can take these quotes to the devotee who is prohibiting you. You can show these quotes to the devotee and say, what should I do? This is a general instruction for everybody. And these are in the books. These instructions are in the books. The instructions in the books are general instructions for everybody. Now, Prabhupada is telling me that if I want to become a serious student, I would do well to attempt to go through the previous acharyas. Now, what should I do? Now, if this devotee says, well, Prabhupada doesn't want that for you, then there is a problem. Because this devotee is trying to squeeze a message which was not given to you by Srila Prabhupada. What Srila Prabhupada gave is directly in black and white in his words. Right here in front of you. Right? And there is nothing in the direct general instructions which will prevent you from, you know, studying this. If you want to become a serious student, you will study from various angles. And I am showing the pramanas here. The point of the series is to show direct pramanas. The, to show direct proofs. So that you know what is, what is there, what is bona fide, what is given by Srila Prabhupada and what is not given by Srila Prabhupada. So, this is how Srila Prabhupada's own words specify that you must read. If you want to become a serious student, you must read. No matter how much hesitation somebody has, they sometimes people have a hesitation with Srila Prabhupada's words. Believe it or not, people have a hesitation with Prabhupada's words. But since they cannot speak it openly, therefore they try to work around their way by using some jugglery. I am not en engaging in any jugglery here. Dhameshwar Prabhu read the purport. I am telling you, take the direct interpretation of the purport. Nothing else. So you can show this purport and the other purport which I showed today and say that these are general instructions in the books. What should I do? Now, if that senior devotee is a sincere devotee who understands Prabhupada's purports as it is, he will say, follow Srila Prabhupada. And then you follow Srila Prabhupada. That's what. All right. So I hope this clarifies the query. Thank you, Sandeep Prabhu. Next, we have Dipayan. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Thank you for today's class. Uh, my question is, uh, the slide which you showed on Shraddha, hmm. I think the very next line of that is uh, Swabhaviki and Balot Padita, Vishwanath right. Chakravarti Thakur mentions. Right. So this Balot Padita, what exactly is it and why has it been mentioned? Is it like a recommendation or is it just like describing that there may be some devotees who practice out of force? What exactly no, no. is it? Uh, could you please? No, that is not the meaning of Balat Utpadita. So when Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says, Shraddha is the first stage of Bhakti. Shraddha in what? He says Shraddha in message of Shastra, of Bhakti Shastra. That is Shraddha. And he says this Shraddha is of two types. I did not cover it today because I didn't want to get into the details of Shraddha. The topic today was Utsaha. But then he details it out and says, Shraddha is of two types. Swabhaviki, natural, which has come from previous lives. So you have an innate faith in Shastra, which has come from previous lives. You don't need a person to tell you that. Secondly, you don't have it. Balat Utpade, somebody punches you with that Shraddha, forcibly. So we come in association with a devotee and you get punched with Shraddha, forcibly. That is Balat. So in the association of a devotee, you get enthused. So that is called Balat Utpadita. Forcibly it is produced in you just as an, a piece of iron gets magnetized in the association of a magnet. But after some time losing that association, then you again lose your magnetism. So that is called Balat Utpadita. 
which is produced due to force of association. That is the interpretation of that particular section. I hope this clarifies. So, uh, is that like, uh, is it recommended? Like, should I feel that I can force somebody to take a bhakti? Like, should I interpret it that way? That's what I was. No, it's not about force. It's not force. It is not produced by forcing others. It is produced by force of association. Simply by okay. associating with somebody, it gets generated. I gave the example, just like simply by associating with a magnet. By the force of the magnet, okay. the iron becomes okay. magnetized. So that is what it is. Okay. Balot Padita. Okay. Thank you. If there's time, I'd like to ask a second. Thank you. Uh, if we have time, yeah, that would be great. Uh, next, we have uh, Dhananjay Tiwari. Hare Krishna Prabhu, Dhanavad Pranam. My pranams. Uh, thank, thank you. Thank you once again for a brilliant session. Uh, I had a question around uh, uh, Shraddha, uh, Prema Bhakti, uh, and Shastra. How these three uh, can be related? Because I have you know, uh, multiple debates with one of my relatives from a different sampradaya who says that she is at the level of bhak uh, Prema Bhakti, so doesn't need Shastras and this stuff. So I'm trying to understand. You know, Prema Bhakti, uh, Shraddha and Shastra, how these three can be connected. Thank you. If you can help. First thing is that somebody claims that they are on the level of Prema Bhakti and therefore they don't need Shastra. So it's already, you know, the indications are not in the correct direction. So because even if somebody is on Prema Bhakti, they will not openly say that I don't need Shastra. First thing is this. For somebody to come out and openly say, I don't need the regulations of Shastra because I'm on Prema Bhakti. That itself goes against one of the characteristics of Prema Bhakti. One of the characteristics of Bhava Bhakti, Bhava comes before Prem. So it is obviously one of the characteristics of Prema Bhakti is Mana Shunyata. An absolute lack of self-glorification. That is one of the characteristics of Bhava Bhakti. If somebody is saying like that, first and foremost, there is some Abhiman uh, involved. Abhiman means there is some uh, some sort of prestige and pride involved that I already have Prema Bhakti. Second thing, even the previous Acharyas who have achieved Prema, from all the Sampradayas, they have showed immense dedication towards Shastra. You will not find a single Acharya saying that you don't need to follow Shastra. Yes, in Raganuga Bhakti, some aspects of Shastra are loosened. Some very tiny aspects are loosened. Not the entire Shastra. 99% <laughs> of the limbs of Bhakti, of Vaidhi Bhakti are also there in Raganuga Bhakti, in Prema Bhakti, Bhava Bhakti. Some aspects are loosened. Now, which aspects are those? There are some minor aspects, nothing major. But nothing so that somebody will start claiming that I don't need to follow Shastra. If somebody publicly starts claiming that, then there is a verse in the Bhagavad Gita. Yaha Shastra Vidhi Mutsrijya Vartate Kama Karataha Na Sa Siddhi Mavapnoti Na Shantim Na Paramgati. So I will show you this verse and uh, you can quote this verse to them. This is from 16th chapter, verse number 23. Yaha Shastra Vidhi Mutsrijya Vartate Kama Karataha Na Sa Siddhi Mavapnoti Na Sukham Na Paramgati. So, he who discards scriptural injunctions and acts according to his own whims attains neither perfection nor happiness nor the supreme destination. So just show them and say, what is the commentary of your Acharya from your Sampradaya on this verse of Bhagavad Gita and tell me. You will find out <laughs> no Acharya is going to speak against this conclusion. All right. So, just tell them to read their own Acharya's commentary on this verse of the Bhagavad Gita. They will come to know what is the truth. All right. Thank you, Prabhu. Next, we have Srinath Prabhu. Please unmute. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Um, uh, immensely informative class. Uh, in, in where you explain like faith and knowledge uh, is, uh, you know, the key to the advancement from Kanishta to the Uttamadhikari platform. So at Uttam Adhikari platform, uh, we have unwavering faith and 
uh, you know, extensive knowledge of Shastra, which makes like there is no possibility of a fall down of Uttam Adhikari, uh, even when he is in the mix of non-devotees working with other like Madhyam Adhikari and Kanishta Adhikari devotees. So when we hear like, you know, there is a fall down. So in light of today's presentation, like uh, what is the key? Uh, is there, because extensive knowledge is extensive knowledge and unwavering faith is like they are the pillars. Uh, so how we understand this? So the thing is in a society, we should not, the purpose of these labels Kanishtha, Madhyam and Uttam is <clears throat> that we should not declare somebody as in general as an Uttam Adhikari. Mm -hmm. That somebody who may be labeled by the society in general as Uttam Adhikari may end up not knowing the conclusions of Shastra. So the thing is when we, Srila Prabhupada used to say rubber stamping, when rubber stamping is indulged in and we ask other people, see here is the Uttam Adhikari. So what happens is we are asking other people to believe in, you know, our uh, perception of that person, which may not be correct. We have to check over a period of time if this person is staying true to the spirit of Shastra, even in difficult situations, if his life is reflecting what the Shastra is saying, if he is living the life of a sadhu. So all these things we have to check over a period of time. If in, a, if in a few meetings we label somebody as an Uttam Adhikari and then we carry that impression if that person fails to live up to that standard then we will say oh Rupa Goswami's definition was incorrect or it doesn't work. But that's not the case. The case is we rushed to label a person. Srila Rupa Goswami never wanted us to label a person very quickly. Take some time. Observe the person. Absolutely no rush. The more time that we take the more patient we are the more time that we give to observing that person, we will be able to see what is the nature of that particular person. Take your time. And once you have identified, please don't label them in public. Because you identified through your hard work. Now you want to make it easy for others. So you label somebody as Uttam Adhikari. But let others do the hard work that you have done. Because unless the other people do that hard work of identifying an Uttam Adhikari, they will not be able to appreciate the value of that Uttam Adhikari. So since you have done the required hard work of understanding through a period of time that this person fits the characteristics of Uttam Adhikari, therefore, it is you who deserves the association of that Uttam Adhikari. So don't make it easy for others. Because if you make it easy for others, then they will not appreciate the struggle that they went through in between in coming to the proper country. It's important to go through the struggle. Because unless they go through the struggle, it is not possible for them to understand that, yes, this was the value of reaching the proper conclusion. It's very important. So my suggestion is take time, first and foremost. Second, identify clearly according to the parameters given in Shastra by Acharyas. Third, once identified, don't publicly label anybody. This is what my recommendation is. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Raj Pradikshit Prabhu. Please unmute. I think he went offline. Uh, he's there. Uh, Raj Pradikshit Prabhu. I can see the square. Can you hear us? Please unmute. Trying to unmute. Yeah, yeah. You're unmuted now. We can Am hear you. Yes. 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 Hare Krishna, and thank you very much, Prabhuji, for giving such an enthusiastic lecture on enthusiasm. And Prabhuji, uh, my question is that uh, you told about uh, Kanishta Madhyam and uh, Uttam Adhikari based on their faith. Hmm. But this faith, uh, I have uh, two things uh, to, to say in this. This faith, not every devotee has a, a capacity or even inclination to study the scriptures deeply. So how to address this thing? And second is, 
many people don't uh, put faith on scriptures because of there are many miraculous things in scripture which do not usually happen in the world. So how to address Hare Krishna, this? sorry to interrupt. We'll just take the first question. Okay. So we'll take the first question which seems like the prominent question. And second question maybe Raj Parikshit Prabhu since we are meeting tomorrow personally. So I can discuss with you personally. So first question is that uh, uh, many people don't seem to have that faith in Shastra. Huh? And instead they have their faith in other things. It's, it's good to have faith in any limb of bhakti. I don't deny that. Be better than having zero faith is to have faith in bhakti. And better than having general faith is to have faith in specific limbs of bhakti. But if I stay true to the spirit of what the Acharyas have given without changing a single word. Because here I don't want to change a single word. How did Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur define Shraddha? Shraddha is Shastra Vishwas. How did Srila Jiva Goswami define Shraddha? He also said Shastra Artha Vishwas. Both of them are saying the same thing. Now, somebody, you may say that many people are not fitting the criteria. Therefore, Prabhu, I am saying that it is very difficult for many people to arrive at the conclusion and therefore it takes a long time for many people and Bhakti Devi doesn't manifest easily. The reason why Bhakti is Sudur Labha is because the process, people get stuck in the process. Stuck because they can't see the path ahead. Why can't they see the path ahead? Because they don't know the source which is illuminating the path all the way through. That source is Shastra. That source is not miracles or that source is not anything else. That source is Shastra. So it's very important to understand that few devotees will have that properly placed faith. Other devotees sometimes may not have that. Maybe in the future they will have. But we can't do anything about it. Sometimes when we are in the general association of devotees, we should be happy, nicely, you know, laugh with them, uh, talk to them. Be, be a nice devotee with them. Don't try to pinch them every time. But you should have your priorities correct. You should know what is there in the Shastra. You should know what is the correct definition and you should know what should be done and what should not be done. So if you are aware of the correct conclusions, then you will not be misled. And your enthusiasm will continue for a long time till you reach the goal. So the purpose of this presentation is so that we ourselves can get our priorities correct. That is the purpose. Somebody else doesn't have, that's okay. Which We should get our priorities correct. That is the point of this entire presentation. Let's say if I give a presentation and if I say everybody should have Shraddha in only one limb of Bhakti, which I like. That limb of Bhakti is, let's say if I say DT worship. DT worship will solve everything. DT worship will allow you to go back. I can give a lecture on one limb of Bhakti. And I can say DT worship will give you Utsa. I can, you know, center the lecture of Utsa around DT worship. But the point is, Utsa is generated by newness in bhakti, newness in bhakti is generated by new realizations which come from Shastra. So I can't, you know, I can't work my way around and give something else as the solution. All solutions are glorious, but I want to give the solution which is recommended by the Acharyas. There are many paths, but I want to give the royal highway, that which is given by the previous Acharyas. So some, somebody may be walking on another path, they may reach the destination, I don't know. But on the Royal Highway, you'll definitely reach the destination. This much I know. So that is my answer to your query. Okay, thank you very much, Rose. Next, we have Pujarini uh, Maharaj. Okay. Uh, and can we unmute her? Just a minute. <clears throat> ask to ask. Her to unmute. Yeah. Okay, I think I can speak now. Hare Krishna Prabhu. I know it's pronounced. My pronouns. In German, there's a word. It's called, it's uh, Aus, it's Seiknet. It means phenomenal, outstanding. And that was the Katha today. So thank you. And it always is. So thank you so much. My question is, um, in the second verse, there's uh, a term called Jana Sangha. And in today's verse, it was Sangha Tyagat. Right. Would you please be able to elaborate on the difference between or what the two terms mean? 
See, one of them is the previous verse said, you know, to give it up. And today's verse is saying the same thing, avoid it. But I want to reserve that for the time when we come to Janasangha. Because I will do the comparison with the previous verse when that lecture is there. Otherwise, I want to speak that in that lecture too. So, same instruction is given twice in two different ways. And what is the purpose yeah. of doing that? But if if it is okay, then we can wait for maybe four more talks and then that answer will come automatically. Is that okay? Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Dhariyat. You're asking me to practice Dhariyat. <laughs> yes. So, little, little okay. patience, but, but it will definitely come. Definitely come right? All right. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Next, I have a question, Prabhuji. Yeah. Um, I think largely due to the influence of Christianity in the West, a lot of times when we hear faith, what we think it means is to just mentally accept a belief that something's true. Right. And so sometimes people become really fanatical about you know, there's scripture and everything in here is true. And if you don't accept it, you're going to hell right. and, and that kind of thing. And, um, I'm just wondering, like, what's the difference between that kind of mood and what it means to have faith in, in scripture from a, a Vedic perspective? Right. So the Shraddha, which is there in the Vedic perspective is holistic. This Shraddha is meant for self enrichment not for causing harm to others. So that is the main purpose of the Shraddha that is given. Why do we have Shraddha in Shastra? So that we enrich our Bhakti. Let's say somebody doesn't have Shraddha in Vedic Shastras. Somebody is a complete disbeliever in Vedic Shastras. What do the Vedas say for him? We go back to Shastra and we say, we ask, what do the Vedas say for him? So the Vedas say for him, Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina. Let everybody be happy. So everybody means even those who don't believe in you, dear Veda, yes. Let them also be happy, no problem. Sarve Santu Niramaya. Let everybody become free of disease, including those who don't believe in you. Obviously, let them also become free. Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu. Let everybody see all auspiciousness everywhere. Ma Kaschit Dukkha Bhag Bhavet. Let nobody become happy, unhappy in any way. Nobody get any suffering in any way. Now, this is from the, this is a general Vedic principle, Srila Prabhupada used to say. The same principle is repeated in uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, where in fifth canto, the residents uh, of Jambudvipa are praying and they say, Swastyastu Vishwasya Khalha Prasidatam. So, translation is, is, may there be good fortune throughout the universe and may all envious people be pacified. May all living entities become calm by practicing Bhakti Yoga. So, this is, this is the literature in which we are having Shraddha. This literature which says, let there be benefit to everybody, including those who don't believe in this literature. Now, this literature could have said, if somebody doesn't believe in it, you are going to an eternal hell. It could have easily said that. It only requires one verse. But there's not a single verse. In the entirety of the 18 Puranas and four Vedas, which says that, you know, you will go to an eternal hell. First and foremost, in Vedic literature, the concept of hell is not eternal. So, it is, it's a temporary place from where you attain reincarnation. So, so many differences. And therefore, Acharyas say that, please have Shraddha in this literature. Because this literature is really holistic and please have Shraddha which is holistic. Means your Shraddha should be for your own nourishment or our Shraddha should be for our own nourishment. Our Shraddha should not be used as a weapon to uh, damn other people to hell. So that is not what Vedic Shraddha is about. So I hope you know that shed some light because uh, it's not only not Christianity, let, let's say Islam. Now there are, I think, more than 70 sects in Islam. 70 sects. Now, if you go to one sect and you ask them how many are going to hell, so this is 69 are going. Are 69 are going? So, yeah, only we got the most correct interpretation. 
and therefore we will be saved from hell fire but the remaining 69 will not be saved so the atheists have a field day when they hear this the atheists laugh they say my goodness if this is religion you see all the major atheists of the world you you might be you might have heard of some of them hitchens and the you know three sages of atheism which are there in the western world so they are targeting mainly christianity and islam they rarely target buddhism or vedic culture the reason for that being vedic culture says oh, come on it's okay you be happy why are you sad it's okay you'll take another birth bahu naam janma naam ante gyanavan maam prapadyate don't worry perform good work huh? good karma <laughs> that's what vedic literature tells them according to their adhikar so they don't have much of a problem with that they have much of a problem with the acts of brutality which were committed by religions which have a very narrow definition of shraddha and a negative definition of shraddha which is used to harm others so that is what i hope this answers your query to some degree of satisfaction thank you prabhu ji um you. we've reached our official end okay but i don't know if you have time if you have i have the inclination if you have the time and inclination we will continue or else we can pause it here well out of hari parsha prabhu's immense generosity we will continue okay. extra time here uh, next we have abhimanyu prabhu yeah. hari krishna prabhu my pranam uh, prabhu ji my question was that uh you quoted from shila prabhupada's purport that uh, those who are not having shastra uh, shastriya faith or uh, having a good understanding of uh, shastra conclusion they may end up uh, like uh, they may end up uh, uh faking or we can say that uh, show, uh, showing the uh, show, uh, showing up the devotion right. so what does it actually mean uh to that uh, how a devotee may end up showing the devotion okay let me give a good example of this let's say today i am a new devotee somebody did not guide me properly somebody did not tell me that i should have shraddha in shastra somebody told me i should have shraddha in one particular group this is devotional service this group is where all the pure devotees are this is where all the pure devotees in the world were produced i get shraddha in that group i join that group i start my devotional service in that group in that group i become a separatist i start seeing other devotees as threats to my group and then after a few years you know in that group also i am not able to progress because shastriya shraddha was not inculcated in me but i have my abhiman my group is the best all the pure devotees are right here i don't need to go anywhere else so i continue to pretend that everything is all right i attend the sunday programs i you know chant my japa nicely i do everything but in my heart i have absolutely no idea of how to move ahead because my priorities were incorrect to begin with i was given the incorrect message to begin with so i am externally going you know like they say going through the motions of daily life of devotional service but internally i am not able to find out what is the next step and why am i stuck here and if when you see such a thing you know that it's a pretense of devotional service going on and it is become a stumbling block on the progress of actual devotional service and that is what shila prabhupad was saying i gave one example there can be many more such examples and cases that is my answer to your query i hope it satisfies you next we have satvik sharma prabhu hari krishna bro Yeah, my pronouns. Am I audible? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Prabhu, uh, we have to associate with uttam adhikaris. So when we have to decide about adhikar, and as you explained in Shri about Shri Madhurey Kadambini, Dwitya Vrishti, what is more important, faith or knowledge? Because when you were explaining, you said I am not telling everybody to become a scholar. Right. so what is more important faith or knowledge yes in shastra first is faith is in shastra first thing is yes. faith in what 
faith not in the you know faith not in the air around us faith in what faith in shastra first and foremost second is according to the degree of knowledge of conclusions of shastra that one has till that point one improves all right now yes. yes the thing is to the degree that one has greater faith in shastra and to the degree that one has greater knowledge of the conclusion of shastras one is considered as a better devotee so both these things are two tracks running parallel on which you have to advance in your bhajan first thing is faith in the message of shastra second is knowledge of the actual message of shastra both things so they Somebody, both run parallelly obviously that is how madhyam they how that's how you progress from madhyam and uttam right if you yes. simply have if you simply put one foot ahead and say i have good faith in sh- in the shastra but then i could not put the other foot ahead i could not get much knowledge so then rupa goswami say okay madhyam adhikari good that's a madhyam adhikari then i put both foot ahead i got good faith and i got very good knowledge of the conclusions oh uttam adhikari so that's what and i am saying knowledge of conclusions of shastra okay. i could have said knowledge of shastra i am saying knowledge of the conclusions of shastra there are shastra. acharyas like shrila gaur kishor das baba ji maharaj who were not personally trained in the culture of sanskrit language who were not trained into reading and writing but was shrila gaur kishor das baba ji maharaj absolute zero in the conclusion of shastra or did he know all the conclusions of shastra he didn't me. know all the conclusions he didn't know oh, my goodness he did know oh, he did know. Okay. Have... he did know obviously so yeah. sometimes people quote gaur kishor das baba ji maharaj did not know even how to read or write it doesn't mean that he did not know the conclusions of shastra he knew all the conclusions of shastra because he was in constant association with all the other uttam adhikaris baba ji is of his time who were you know discussing these conclusions so therefore shastra yukti should be known you may not know shastra so much but shastra yukti is the term used there you should know the yukti the conclusions of shastra even though you may not have the expertise to read the individual verses and decode them or so on and so forth know the conclusion at least that everybody should know in order to progress now if we don't even know the conclusions of bhakti and then how can we call ourselves advanced that is the point hmm? advancement is by knowing the siddhanta fair enough that's a very fair you know advancement is by knowing and practicing the siddhantas that's a very fair you know thing to say and somebody said no i want to be called advanced but i don't want to know the siddhanta i'm sorry sir in no university can one become a professor without knowing the conclusions of the subject matter i'm sorry you are in the wrong lane <laughs> right so that's what it is okay thank you prabhu hari krishna uh next we have ananga mohan prabhu hari krishna prabhu dhanavad thanks a lot for such a wonderful class and paving our path In devotional service so here my question is what is the difference between a uttam adhikari and mahabhagavat and it is said in sandarbhas i heard it the mahabhagavatas are not generally appear in kali yuga but it is true mahabhagavat general not appearing in kali yuga and that's not in bhakti yeah. santa mahabhagavat is uh-huh. mahabhagavat basically an uttam bhagavat or a mahabhagavat is defined in the bhagavatam sarva bhuteshu yah pashyat bhagavat bhavam atmana so if somebody who sees presence of bhagwan everywhere in the hearts of all living entities and that person is you know, a realized person one is an adhikari a person who is eligible for the highest type of bhakti and the second is a bhagavat who is already living that so the eligible person is somebody who is living that particular life of highest point of devotional service you will find such people also but very rare let me tell you a secret you may not find them on tv so easily okay so you may find them slightly more reserved okay so that's why they are not for general public thank you all right thanks sir one last query okay uh bish bishwa deep roy We're unable to hear you for some reason. I can. You're unmuted. Is it okay now? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Prabhuji, for the class. 
Uh, actually, I had a com uh, comment that I previously thought that uh, the more faster a person will know, uh, he will become more separatist and he will think that, okay, this is the best thing and this uh, all the other things are, are not important. But after I uh, hear you so much, uh, I have realized that more the uh, shast uh, proper shastic conclusion will be known. Uh, the person will become more means liberal, uh, uh, liberal in thought and he can also uh, very, very well protect his work. Thank you for the class. That is all the, the good wishes of my seniors and my Gurujanas who have taught how to read Shastra in a proper spirit. So I'm very thankful to all of them because without them, I am, who am I? Without them, I am a cheater. Let's just put it in very plain words. Without them, without their support, without Shastra, if I come here and speak anything, then you are listening to a cheater. That's what, you know, it is. So the credibility is coming from them. So what I am able to do somehow is that uh, if I'm able to stay faithful to what they have said, and the way to stay faithful is to directly quote their words, like not even change <laughs> a single syllable from what they have said. That is, that if that credit you want to give, Srila Prabhupada used to say, if you want to give me the credit of being a good postman, <laughs> I would like to take that credit. <laughs> so if you want to give me that credit, I'd love to take that credit that uh, I'm a good post mailman. So I knocked on your door today and I have some mail to deliver, which is full of utsah. Thank you, Vishwadi Prabhu, for that kind comment. Hare Krishna. So now I'll invite all the devotees to unmute and give a big thank you to Hari Parashan Prabhu. Thank you so much, so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Yes, Hari Parshat Prabhu ki khub 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 jai. All the jai plus to the Guru Parampara. Hari Krishna. You can give it to whoever you want. We are we are conveying it to you, and you can give it to you whoever you want. I'll I'll give half of it to Dhameshwar Prabhu and the remaining half to the Guru Parampara. Get way too much credit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hare Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Okay. See you next time. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.